Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. First look, Sport Plane Resource Guide readies for prime time. No extension on July 1st deadline for 5G inspired retrofits. Lufthansa joins Go First in grounding Airbus jets. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Sport Plane Resource Guide readies for prime time. The next generation all digital sport plane resource guide is slowly getting ready for its public unveiling, and the result is looking really good. The most comprehensive book ever undertaken about all things sport aviation, the newest version expands the last version's 1,100 pages to what appears to be some 2,000 pages at least. The digital capabilities mean that the ESPRG will also add video, audio, webinars, and very frequent newsletters to the mix. The how-to chapters have been expanded, aircraft directories are being enlarged dramatically, new directories and descriptive profiles will be dedicated to engines, avionics, instruments, parachutes, and other accessories. And yes, our aggressive report card system is even more comprehensive, detailed, and critical than ever before. We'll tell you what's good and what isn't an uncommon property in the pay-for-play influencer games being played by so many self-proclaimed aviation experts. The ESPRG is still asking manufacturers to fill out some easy online surveys for their companies, products, and planes for listings that'll be presented without any cost. The surveys are accessible online on the lower right side of the page at sportplane.com. The book will go public shortly and will keep you updated on the release date. And after the break, Air India pilot engages in unauthorized in-flight wooing. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Air India pilot engages in unauthorized in-flight wooing. Air India found itself in the highly irregular and unenviable position of having to remind its pilot cadre to maintain sterile flight decks after one of the air carrier's captains, for reasons passing understanding, spent an unauthorized, patently illegal hour in the company of a female friend, locked away in the cockpit of an Air India jet during a Delhi to Dubai flight. What's more, the captain allegedly instructed his SIC to ensure the aircraft's flight deck appeared welcoming, warm, and comfortable. The incident was reported by a cabin crew member. Pilatus PC-12 fleet surpasses 10 million flight hours. Pilatus announced the global fleet of more than 1,900 Pilatus PC-12s had surpassed 10 million flight hours. The Swiss plane maker asserted, quote, Pilatus is proud to announce that with almost 2,000 PC-12s delivered, the global fleet of the popular single-engine turboprop has officially accumulated more than 10 million flight hours. The fleet leader, based in Canada, has flown more than 35,000 hours, while 71 PC-12s have logged over 20,000 hours of flight time. As a whole, the PC-12 fleet has recorded more than 9.3 million landings, with four aircraft reporting over 50,000 landings." End quote. NBAA unhappy with DC think tank snub. The NBAA took issue with a Washington, D.C. based policy group describing its work as, quote, promoting a misleading caricature of business aviation that ignores the sector's sustainability leadership and the industry's essential role in the nation's economy and transportation system, end quote. The group, the opaquely named Institute for Policy Studies, lies accused of ignoring advances in the aviation industry to paint an unflattering, unrealistic picture of its overall carbon impact over the coming decades. The NBAA also had qualms about the portrayal of smaller aviation companies. USAF F-22s intercept high-altitude balloon Last week, the Air Force scrambled three F-22 fighter jets to assess what turned out to be a high-altitude balloon in the vicinity of Hawaii's Big Island. 
Honolulu-based U.S. Indo-Pacific Command set forth, quote, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command responded to an unidentified radar signature Friday in the vicinity of the island of Hawaii. Pacific Air Forces launched three F-22s to assess the situation and visually identified a spherical object, end quote. The statement identified the spherical object as a balloon, which the Raptors monitored a while before concluding it posed no threat. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. No extension on July 1st deadline for 5G-inspired retrofits. The looming deadline to install compliant navigational equipment won't be extended, according to DOT Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who apparently values cell phones more than aviation safety. Buttigieg urged airlines to work aggressively to bring their fleets into compliance before the July 1st deadline, backed up by an FAA warning that the administration has no plans to offer extensions. The rule requires aircraft to have updated radio altimeters that can safely operate accurately even in the vicinity of newly released 5G networks. The International Air Transport Association weighed in on the matter, welcoming an agreement with a handful of U.S. telecom operators to extend their voluntary 5G mitigation measures near 188 U.S. airports. That agreement has no bearing on the FAA, however, merely safeguarding the real-world instrument operations near affected airports. Carriers are still on the hook to come into compliance before July 1, 2023. Nick Kareen, IATA Senior Vice President of Operations, Safety and Security, said, quote, Airlines did not create this situation. They are victims of poor government planning and coordination. Industry concerns about 5G expressed for many years in the appropriate forums were ignored and overridden. Half-measure solutions have been foisted upon airlines to implement at their own expense and with little visibility into their long-term viability, end quote. And after these messages, Lufthansa joins Go First in grounding Airbus jets. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor a commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Welcome back. Lufthansa joins Go First in grounding Airbus jets. Days after Indian ultra-low-cost airline Go First grounded its Airbus A320neo fleet, German flag carrier Lufthansa announced on Thursday, May 4th, that it would temporarily ground one-third of its Zurich subsidiary's Airbus A220 fleet, citing issues with the aircraft's Pratt & Whitney engines. The Cologne-headquartered airline stated, quote, Lufthansa temporarily grounds a third of its Airbus A220 fleet in Zurich due to issues with Pratt & Whitney engines, end quote. Lufthansa's Swiss subsidiary operates 30 A220s. Rudimentary mathematics dictate, ergo, that 10 of the aircraft are AOG. On May 3rd, Mumbai-based Go First Airlines ceased operations and filed an application for voluntary insolvency resolution proceedings before the national company Law Tribunal. Go First fleet comprised Airbus A320neo narrowbody jets exclusively. Subject model is powered by Pratt & Whitney's PW1100G geared turbofan engine, a highly complex power plant plagued to date by widespread design and functionality issues. Raytheon CEO Greg Hayes intimated that up to five years are likely to pass before the reliability of Pratt & Whitney's geared turbofan Neo engines equals that of the engine maker's CEO models, by which older iterations of the A320 were powered. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.